Welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. I know it's a little dark out here. It's late in the evening. I got this one old light up here. It ain't much. But I wanted to show you how to skin a squirrel. Now, I have done this in some older videos, but a lot of folks, they ain't going to go back and watch an old video. And I had somebody ask the other day about how do you skin your squirrels. Well, we're going to do a short, sweet video on it. I'm going to try to get the camera set up and the light set up where you can see what's going on. I got one old squirrel. We're going to skin it, and I'm going to use just my fishing pocket knife. Uh, I took a liking to this knife, and uh, I actually, I told y'all the other day, I ordered, I got two more of one on eBay. So uh, I kind of like them. I skinned a squirrel with the other day, done really good. So I'm going to show you the way I do it. Now, I ain't saying this is the only way to do it or the best way to do it. I will say it works the best for me because I don't like to get hair all over everything. I don't always have a table to lay everything on. And this just seems to work better for me. Uh, so stick with me and let's get this joker peeled right here. It's a nice, beautiful, drizzling, dreary day. Got a nice, cool breeze of blowing out here. Man, it feels good down here now, y'all. So let's get this thing peeled. We might have it for supper later on in the week. All right, y'all, I'm going to do the best I can to stay in the frame with the camera and all whatnot. I had to turn it around this kind of way because I ain't got no uh, um, light on the other side. So what I do, first thing, is I get right here at these hands, and you can call them paws, hands, whatever. But right there, and I cut them off with a pocket knife at the joint. And the reason I do it that way is because it don't have no sharp bones in there when I get ready to do what else I'm going to do. I'm trying to look. So I start right here. I'm holding that squirrel with the back to me. I hope y'all can tell. And I cut across right there. And then I angle around toward him, toward down his legs, hindquarters, whatever you call it. So you got to constantly wipe your knife when it gets hair on the blade because you don't want that hair all over the meat. So if you go at an angle like along with his back, the way you're holding this, it'll sever right through that tail bone right there. And I kind of take that knife and wiggle it because my finger is right under that skin. I don't go to hacking hard. I kind of take it right there and wiggle. And my knife's sharp now. You, if you're trying to do that with an old dull knife you got there out of the kitchen sink, your wife been chopping on a chopping board with, probably ain't going to work out good for you. You got to get you a good sharp pocket knife, and it's what you need in your pocket. Any old knife will work if it's a good sharp one. So once I get right there, then a lot of people want to step on it with the tail with the boot and all that kind of stuff, and you can do that. It'll work. But right here, watch. Look at him. Look at there now. All right, you wipe his hand over him off on your breeches leg. Then you reach and grab right there and you grab that arm and you pull it out just like you're pulling a young un shirt off. All right, and then you got the head right there. Now, some of y'all gonna wanna fry that head. I ain't real particular on them. I wouldn't grow it up eating the brains. My mama, she used to have a fit. My daddy brought a squirrel head to the house, so I didn't get to grow up eating the brains. So I grab right there at that point, grab a hold of that, and y'all, we ain't laid this squirrel down or had to do much of nothing up until this point. So now, you got these joints right here. So grab your squirrel, cut on the back side right here, and you can grab right there and look at there, that joke, well, that's a mess. There it went. Oh, that tail flopped up there like it got on the meat there. You gotta be all right so i'm gonna cut on the back side of that you see how that did and then i grab that and then there's roscoe's he's sitting there waiting on that all right then at this point i got a little bit of hair on where that tail flop you got just a head now i'm trying to show you how to do this without having to have a table and, and all such as that stuff if you shot him close, see there, that head come right off. And I'm going to lay that over there because I may peel it and get the tail for myself to help train these dogs. I like to play with them with it. So at this point, I kind of take and cut right here. 
And I kind of just grab and peel all that off right there. Some of them's male, some of them's female. Roscoe, he's over here. In case y'all didn't know. This is where Roscoe gets all of his, his parts, okay? I, I didn't want nobody accusing me of not feeding no Roscoe. All right, now I go through there with that knife, split that open, open that up. Turn him around. Y'all, this don't take long. I'm taking a little more time being careful and uh, not messing up so I make a good video out of it. But see, I stick that long. That's why I like his long, skinny pocket knife blade. I like a big skinny knife. I mean, I am a fan of a big skinny knife. I mean, doggone it, I tote this right here on my heel all the time. But that ain't good for skinning squirrels, y'all. I'm just gonna tell you. You reach in there now, and here comes Roscoe's other favorite parts. They go over there in his pan. And look at him, y'all. Just like that. And I shot that squirrel through that front shoulder. I boogered it up pretty good, but it's still all right. We got a clean squirrel. Now what I do, I throw him in my ice cream bucket. And then when I get all of my squirrels cleaned and in my ice cream bucket, we go in there to sink and we wash them real good. So now we got blood all on our knife blade and everything. So we just, I'm going to fold it up because I don't want it to poke a hole in my bucket. I only had one squirrel tonight. So y'all, I hope that helped y'all learn how I'm trying to get what it's like shining on where you can see me. I don't be looking like Blair Witch and whatnot. Some of you young'uns don't know about Blair Witch, do you? Probably some of the older ones neither. Oh, uh, so I got my, my squirrel tail. Now, now y'all, usually if you're gonna peel that head on off, uh, Roscoe will get most of this. I usually keep part of this and uh, strip them tails out I'm probably gonna let him have this and be a, if you leave the head on there and you can pull that all the way on off and and I've got two or three hanging up right here. I hang them up and, and help play with the dogs with them, but I'm gonna go ahead and give these dogs this. You want your tail? See it? See it? Talk to me. 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 Come on. Talk to me. <laughs> anyway, y'all, we just did a little short how to skin a squirrel video, or at least how I skin it, okay? There's a lot of different ways to do stuff, and look, I'm going to be honest with you. As long as you get the hair off of it and the guts out of it and you can cook it and eat it, you won, okay? They ain't no, hey, this is wrong. I'm just showing you the way I do it, and maybe if you don't do it that way, it's simple, and you don't need a table and a board and a thing nailed to a tree and all this rigmarole. You can skin that joker right down there in the creek bank when you ain't got a table nowhere or a stump there to use and cook him right there over a fire with a stick if you want to. So anyway, thank y'all for watching Spirit of Outdoors. Remember, the best way to do things is the way you like to do it. We'll see y'all. We'll be back for long with another one. Have a good one.